Greetings from just off Orwell Lane. Of all the seven sins, avarice rests at the core of the infections of evil that can turn a man against even their own kin. As an heir to a vast fortune discovers, facing the darkness of a familial heart corrupted by such depravity, the lure of hypnotism again plays a role as the dastardly plot is slowly revealed and at the last exposed by none other than the shadow himself. Will the record turn ever faster to the exciting conclusion, or will the shadow reach the needle in time to stop the dulcet tones of death's melodious harp? One thing is known for sure, crime does not pay. The shadow knows. Starring Bill Johnstone again in the dual role of Lamont Cranston and The Shadow, and Agnes Moorhead as Margot Lane, from December 11th, 1938, Murder by Rescue. curtain rises on this latest episode of The Shadow, here's something to remember. Just as this master sleuth depends on science to aid him in tracking down his foes, so we depend on science to make our lives safer, more pleasant. Outstanding among recent scientific inventions is a new kind of tire with a tread that sweeps wet roads so dry you can light a match on its track. It's the new Goodrich Safety Silvertown with the Lifesaver Tread. Because of its amazing road-drying action, this tread gives you the quickest non-skid stops you've ever had. Provides you with the greatest skid protection ever offered. For your own safety, your family's safety, equip your car with Goodrich Safety Silvertown. The Shadow, a serious character who aids those in distress, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice belongs. Today's story, Murder by Rescue. Yes, yes, this phonograph record does sound like an automobile motor, but I must have more speed. Shut it off, Ellen. All right. Very useful to have some sound such as a bell or automobile to operate on the mind to help create the hypnotic state. Lord, if you take my advice... My dear wife, who is the expert scientist in this family? I am. Yes, but when are you going to get busy? That precious nephew of yours, Warren, will be 21 in another month. Yes, even though my training has deliberately kept him almost a child, Warren will soon be of age. If he lives, Ellen. And if he does, he gets all his father's estate and we'll be paupers living on his charity. You promised we'd get that money. We will, my dear. Warren, unfortunately, will meet with a, <laughs> shall we say, an accident. But when, where? Soon, my dear. Oh, Claude, are you sure this hypnotizing trick of yours will work? Yes, yes. I've not been a professor of psychology over 20 years for nothing. This experiment will be the greatest I've ever done. You've seen how Warren reacts to our little phonograph record of the car when we played for him. Yes, but will your experiment show how one can train the human mind? Yes, train it to do anything, Ellen. Even die. Hmm. My dear, we are trustees of my nephew's estate. We have the use of the money until he's of age. Now, if you were gotten rid of in an awkward manner, the police might ask questions. But this way, no one will know. Oh, I suppose you're right. That must be Warren now. Close up the phonograph. Quick, he mustn't see the record. Yes. Uh, come in. Hello, Claude. Aunt Ellen? Well, how are you, Warren, dear? Oh, fine, Aunt Ellen. Mm, going for your walk, my dear? I hope you're dressed warmly enough. Oh, I'm fine. Uh, say, Uncle, can I take Jigs along? The poor pup's been cooped up in his kennel all morning. May I take him out? I, I guess so, Warren. He won't go far. No, just around the estate. Oh, but I am. Uh, that's all right. Well, I'll go get Jigs. Be careful, Warren, darling. Yes, Aunt Ellen. Bye. Bye, Warren. 
Come on, Claude, let's get busy. That young fool annoys me. He'll be better off dead, and we'll be better off when he is. Oh, Lamont, this air is wonderful. It's so good to get away from the city and out in the open air. Yes, isn't it, Margot? That's why I keep my country home open all year round. Lamont, who owns this lovely estate we're crossing now? I believe it belongs to Professor Mitchell and his family. Look, Lamont, there's a boy coming across the lawn. Yes. Well, say, that's a fine-looking dog he has with him. Hello, puppy. <laughs> well, hello, fella. fella. Oh, my goodness. Don't jump at me. <laughs> oh, so your name is Jiggs, eh? He's a grand dog. He certainly is. He's clever, too. You see, my uncle's given him special training. Oh, your uncle? Yes. Oh, maybe I'd better introduce myself. I'm Warren Mitchell. Well, how do you do? Well, this is Miss Lane. My name's Cranston. How do you do? Hi. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, that's all right, I... I didn't realize you were holding something when I started to shake hands with you. Well, it, it's just a picture. A miniature of my mother when she was a little girl. Oh, how lovely. She has beautiful red hair. Yes, she did. She's dead now. Oh, I'm sorry. I always keep the miniature with me so I can take it out and look at her. I understand. Uh, I'm afraid we're on your property. Oh, that's all right. Anyway, it isn't mine. At least not for another month. You see, my uncle, Professor Claude Mitchell, he, he handles my estate. Oh, see. And next month? Then I'll be 21 and I'll control my own affairs. That'll give Uncle Claude more time for psychology. Oh, that's what he's a professor of? Yes, they say he's good at it, too. Oh, you'd like to see something he taught Jake? Why, yes. Oh, yes. All right, look. Uh, first, I ring this little bell. <laughs> oh, I can <laughs> when you ring it. No, you were trying to see. <laughs> All right, boy, here's your candy. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Every time he hears the bell, he knows that he's going to get candy. And he barks till he gets it. Does it work every time? Oh, yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, Dick. Candy coming up. Well, your uncle should be congratulated on a successful experiment. Warren? Warren? Oh, here's Uncle Claude now. Warren, what are you doing with that bell? Why, I was just playing with Jig's uncle. You have Jig's very well conditioned, Professor. Condition? What do you know about conditioning? Well, I'm not an authority like yourself, Professor, but I... I know that when you train an animal to react to sound, the way Jiggs reacts to the bell, it's called conditioning. Oh. Could you do something like that with human beings, Professor? Why, uh, one doesn't experiment with humans. Come, Warren. We'd better get back to the house. All right, Uncle. Good day, sir. Good day. Madam. Goodbye, Mr. Cranston. Goodbye. 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 Come on, Jiggs. Jiggs. Yes, young man. I think you will see me again. Why, Lamont? What is it? Oh, nothing, Margot. Just a feeling. A feeling that Professor Mitchell, in spite of his words, might not stop at experimenting with people's lives. Lamont, why are you parking here at the bend in the road? I'm waiting for someone, Margot. Young Warren Mitchell. Warren Mitchell? Yes, Margot. I've been investigating the boy's habits. And every night about this time, he takes a walk around his estate. You want to see him, Lamont? Yes, and talk to him, without his uncle around. He's such an odd boy. He seems so young for his age, but very nice. Look, Lamont, huh? there's someone coming now, walking along the side of the road. Well, there might be Warren. I'll sound my horn. Hello there. It is Warren Mitchell. Yes. It's Lamont Cranston, Warren. Oh, hello, Mr. Cranston. I'm Miss Lane. Yeah, hop in, Warren. We'll give you a lift home. Get in front with us, Warren. There's room enough. Oh, oh I thank you. Yes. You drive, Warren? Well, I, I used to, Miss Lane, but... But what, Warren? Well, it's funny, but I must be months now since I've ever ridden in a car. Uncle, well, he gets strange ideas sometimes. Oh, I see. Warren, how long have you lived with your uncle? All my life. That is, since my mother died. We lived here even then. Yes, I remember. You showed us that miniature of her. Uh, may I see that picture again, Warren? Sorry, sir. Uncle Claude sent it for a new frame. Warren, are you tired? No. It's just a motor. I... Warren. Warren. Touch Warren. Leave him alone. Lamont, his eyes are open. He's like... like a sleepwalker. It isn't sleep, Margot. It's a hypnotic spell. Hypnotic? But how? He was here in the car with us. No one hypnotized him. Nevertheless, he is hypnotized. 
I don't know what did it, but I intend to find out. At the bend of the road, long ago, my mother... What did you say, Warren? Quiet, Margot. We can't hear you. Listen. My mother, a little girl with bright red hair. Lamont, what did you mean? He's repeating a story, Margot, about when his mother was a little girl. At the dangerous bend of the road. A car. Margot, that's the curve we were just parked on. A car came fast. Mother ran in front of it. But Grandfather, he jumped, saved her. I must be brave like Grandfather. Save little girl with red hair. Here's the boy's house, you know. What are we going to do? We'll stop the car. See if we can wake him out of this. What? Oh, oh. Horn, are you all right? Why, yes, I, I must have fallen asleep. I remember getting into the car, but, but that's all. I see. Well, that was a silly thing to do. I, I apologize. <laughs> that's all right, Warren. Good night. Good night, and thanks for the lift. Now, don't mention it. Good night, Miss Lane. Good night. Not but a strange boy. It isn't Warren's fault, Margot. Can't you see it? He was hypnotized by the car motor. By the motor? Yes. That's why he came right out of it when I turned off the engine. Somebody has trained Warren to react like that to the sound of a car. Trained? Yes, Margot. The way Professor Mitchell trained the dog Jigs to react to the sound of a bell. Margot, there's some reason for hypnotizing Warren like this. A reason that may interest the shadow. Coming, coming. Just a minute, please. Oh, it is you, Professor. Yes. Come in, Professor Mitchell. Are you alone? I am alone, always here, Professor. Nobody wants to buy dolls from Otto anymore. I make many, many dolls. Little one, big one, some as big as a man. Like uh, that one in the corner. Ugh, I cannot tell them. Uh, I do not fear. There's no one about here, Professor. The car followed me from my estate, at least. I, I think it was following me, but I got rid of it. What's that? It's the doorbell. Don't answer it. Oh, but I must hear, Professor. It perhaps is another customer. Uh, step in the back of the shop, please. Hurry up, Otto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what is it? No one here? Ah, boy, trick. Go away, boy, wherever you are. If I catch you, I tell your parents. Who was it, Otto? Oh, just boys playing jokes. Always telling my bell. This one, he runs fast. I didn't see him. Yes, where's the bell? The uh, doll. Uh, right here under the counter. You see, it's not quite finished. You promised I would have it tonight. Oh, you will have, Professor. Later, I will bring it out of your house. Oh, let me see it. Here, under the light. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is it not just like the picture of the little girl? Uh-huh. Well, it, it's close enough. Same color red hair. Well, I, I hope your little girl likes the doll. My little girl? <laughs> now, this doll is for a boy. A boy who has grown too big. What did you say? Just make sure I get it tonight. Another word to anyone. Oh, no, 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 here, Professor. Not one word. I'll pay you when you bring the doll. Here, Professor. Ah, here, Papillion. <laughs> Quite right, Otto. Himmel, no, come on. Who? Who spoke? Where are you? I, I can't see anyone. You cannot see me because my mind wills that you do not. I am in the shadows, Otto. Well, Listen to me. You copied this doll from a picture, didn't you? A miniature, didn't you? Yeah, but I, I meant no harm. A picture of a little girl with bright red hair. Yeah, the, the professor, he, he ordered it special. Why, Otto? Why? I, I don't know. And tonight you deliver it? Yeah. Very well, Otto. Deliver it. In that way, we may be able to discover just what Professor Mitchell is going to use it for. The professor has been very clever. And I have an idea that he's planning a ghastly crime. But he did not figure on the shadow. <laughs> Before we bring you Act Two of The Shadow's Adventure, attention, motorists. Do you realize the main cause of the thousands of auto accidents that happen every year? The shadow knows. Carelessness and carelessness alone the answer. Everyone knows the automobile is a wonderful invention. 
but it has no power to think for itself. It's up to you, the man behind the wheel, to do all the thinking for your car and yourself. Drive carefully. Yes, motorist. And it pays to do plenty of thinking about tires, too. You certainly owe it to yourself and family to give them the amazing skid protection of the new Goodrich Safety Silvertown. For here at last is a tire that acts on wet roads like a whole battery of windshield wipers. It makes a dry track for the rubber to grip. But motorists, do you realize just how dry that track really is? Well, it's so dry that you can actually light a match on it. And that's pretty dry, isn't it? Believe me, it's plenty of proof that this new Goodrich Silvertown with Lifesaver Tread will give you the quickest non-skid stops you've ever had. Furthermore, don't forget this. Whether roads are wet or dry, Silvertowns at all times give you that other great life-saving tire feature, the famous Golden Ply Blowout Protection. Play safe. Get these life-saving Silvertowns for your car. There is no extra cost. Are you afraid that Dr. Mitchell may be watching from his window, Lamont? The whole house is dark, so it can't be much after 11. Yes. Look, Muscle. That first floor window is where young Warren sleeps. I'm going in to speak to the boy. Find out what's going on here. But Lamont, suppose the professor catches you sneaking into his house. He won't see the shadow, Margot. Warren will probably be asleep. If he is, I'll imitate the professor to learn what's happening. Imitate the professor? Why not? Warren's uncle has victimized him by hypnotism created by the use of a phonograph record. The basis of the shadow secret is also hypnotism. You wait here, Margot. I think the shadow can beat Professor Mitchell at his own game. Warren. Warren. Thank you, little girl. Warren. Hey, you little girl. Warren, listen to me. Do exactly as I say. Warren, I want to save you. Save the little girl. It's no use. Mind is completely controlled by Professor Mitchell. Tragic experiment must run its course. Lord, I know I heard a voice. Quiet, Ellen. Warren must have been talking in his sleep. He's in a hypnotic sleep right now. Put on the phonograph record. I want to rehearse the accident again. The accident which will make us wealthy. Don't start the record until I signal to you. All right. Now, Warren. Warren, listen to me. Listen to me. When the clock strikes 12, you will dress and go to the bend in the road where your grandfather saved your mother when she was a little girl. A car comes down the road. A little girl with red hair. Your mother suddenly runs out in front of the moving car. Then you jump to save the little girl with bright red hair. Save the little girl, Warren. You must. Save the little girl with red hair. You must be brave, Warren, at the bend of the road. The bend of the road. Save the little girl. There is a car coming. Listen. Ready, Ellen? Listen, Warren. Car coming. Car coming. Closer. Closer. What do you see now? A little girl. My mother. In front of me. You jump to save her. You jump, Warren. Say it. I... I jump. I... 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 What? What is it? What happened? Nothing, Warren. Nothing. You were having a nightmare. It was just a dream, Warren. You must go back to sleep. To sleep at once. To sleep. To sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, then, you see, with my hypnotic power plus the sound of a car, it will work perfectly. But Warren screamed and woke up. I shan't mind his screaming when the time comes. And he won't wake up. <laughs> Bend in the road. What are we doing here? I'll tell you, Margot. 
I couldn't wake Warren from the hypnotic spell. But the professor's experiment was run its course. But Lamont, if the professor and his wife are planning to make away with that young boy, we should do something. Listen, Margot. I overheard the professor's plans in Warren Wood Mitchell's room. But we must wait. We must break this hold the professor has on him once and for all. There's a car coming. There's very little traffic yet, Rolly. It's coming very fast. Come on! Oh, no. Oh, no. That car's a car killer. Oh, the Lamont, they, they didn't stop. Yes. Interesting, wasn't it? Lamont, how can you? That child is lying by the roadside. Hers are dead. Now help me find her. Uh, look closely, Margot. Well? You see any red-haired child there? Why... Oh, no. What became of her? Don't be alarmed, Margot. The car carried the child away. I, I don't understand. Tell me, Margot. What did the child look like? Well, a little girl with red hair. In an old-fashioned dress. Like the one in the miniature young Warren Mitchell showed us? The picture of his mother? Yes. Yes, that's true. Margot, what did you see the child do? Why, just as the car reached us, she came out of the darkness and ran in front of it. And if you'd been alone, you'd have plunged in front of the car to save her, wouldn't you? Well, yes, Lamont, I tried to, but you stopped me. And you would have died trying to save a red-headed doll. A doll? Precisely, Margot. A doll made to look like the child Warren Mitchell had always heard about. Just as the car reached this bend on the road, the doll swung in front of the car like a child running across the road. I don't understand. The doll is hung like a puppet from a rod fastened to the top of the car. The professor's wife pulled a rope attached to the rod and the doll swung in front of the car. Then this was a trick to kill young Mitchell? Of course. Young Warren walks here often. So when he's found dead here tomorrow morning, they'll blame a hit-and-run driver. Oh. And Professor Mitchell and his wife will be rich. Oh, thank heaven the prop say. Warren isn't safe yet, Margot. What do you mean? What we saw was just a rehearsal. That car will return. We'll pass this spot again when the professor is sure that Warren is here. You mean Warren is coming here? Yes, Margot. He'll rise from bed in a hypnotic state, dress and start for a walk just as the clock strikes midnight. Listen, it's midnight now. Father save mother. I must go. I must be as brave as grandfather. The, the little girl. The little red-haired girl. At the bend of the road. The car will come. Be brave. <laughs> Lamont, will Warren come here? Yes, I'm sure he will. What shall we do? Keep the boy from leaping in front of the car as I tried to do? No, Margo. We must let Warren see the doll and try to rescue it. I would have kept Warren from coming, but this is the only way Warren can break the spell that hung the cuffs on him. Yes, take these. What are they, handcuffs? Not exactly. They made to fit around a man's ankles. When Warren comes here in a hypnotic state, you must put these on him. But Lamont, that'll wake him. None of you careful. Remember, he's in a trance. When he sees what he thinks is a red-haired child about to be killed, he'll try to leap. With his ankles bound, he can't move. I might fumble. Can't you put them on? No, Margot, I've got work to do myself. Look here. A dummy. Exactly like a man. Where did it come from? As soon as I learned the professor's exact plan, I drove down to the doll maker and got it from him. The shadow will throw it in front of the moving car. Professor Mitchell will think it's Warren's body. I hope your plan works, Lamont. The time's short. Get back, Margot. Give it up. Warren's coming. Listen. Standing the road and wait. Wait for the car. The car. Now, Marco, put the anchors on him. The red-haired child. I never noticed when I put the anchors on. Good. Your work is done. Now hide. I'll speak to them as the shadow. The car. The car is coming. Coming nearer. Nearer. Be brave. Save the car. Look out! What? Well, what happened? I, I tried to jump, but I fell. What's this chain on my ankle? Quiet, Warren. Silence and watch. Who are you? Silence. Listen. Ellen, let's scream. Did you hear Warren scream when we hit him? You fool. 
pull yourself together. Let's get out and make sure he's gone. Wait, we, we, we hit him squarely. He must be done for. I'll make sure. Turn him over on his face. Helen, this isn't Warren. What? It's a dummy. We've been tricked. <laughs> yes, Professor Mitchell. Face your nephew. He's alive and well. Warren. Oh, what is it? I thought I saw a little girl like that picture I have of my mother in, in front of your car. But it's just a doll. Warren, this fiendish mechanism makes the doll look like a real child running into danger. They hypnotize you. Taught you to obey the sound of the car. They meant to run you down and kill you when you leaped to save the child. They wanted to get your money. Warren, you must stop them. No, no, let them go, please. Their hypnotic hold on me is broken. They'll never be able to harm me. Look, Warren. The car's out of control. But it's headed for the bank. Look out! Oh, they plunged right over the bank. Wait, Warren. It's useless to go there. They must be dead. Dead? Yes. They were desperate with fear. Blinded by the knowledge of their guilt. Fate took matters into her own hands. And proved again that the guilty shall be punished. is based on a story copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The Shadow Magazine is now on sale at your local newsstand. Ha, 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 ha.